Aba, uh, it's not always Congress who does not want to increase the budget of uh, uh, department uh, departments because uh, you propose uh, your budget to the Department of Budget and Management, and we just get the national the, the net. And usually, what is written in the net becomes the law. So I think uh, it's not just Congress that's uh, the problem when it comes to. Uh, uh, provision of uh, appropriations. The, the executive itself has to uh, recognize uh, what's important and uh, or what can wait. Uh, because, uh, for example, this fire, I think this, this is very important. And then finally, with regards to education, uh, I have children and I know what they're uh, studying. But uh, it, uh, in preparation for the fire, what I'm doing right now is I'm sending my kid to uh, a programming school to learn programming, uh, uh, electronics to learn electronics, automotive, and uh, hydraulics. Why not the government itself, the, the, the depth ed, grade one to ten at least, teach this, uh, these subjects right there in the school? Hydraulics, uh, electronics, automotive, practical things where they can get, uh, you know, ideas in substance, not just in theories. Because if you are very good in math, but you, you do not see how a machine works, that's useless. That's why uh, my son, who is a, a champion in math, two of them, I, I sent them to uh, automotive school, and then uh, they're asking me, why, why should we uh, learn, still learn these uh, practical things? Because I tell them, in the future, like for example, driverless car, it needs a, a total uh, knowledge of everything. So I think we also have to, uh, you know, think of our curriculum, revisit our curriculum, at least for the grade 1 to 10. Uh, so thank you. Sir, who will want to respond to... I will respond to all, um, but um, regarding what I mentioned a while ago, sorry, <laughs> sorry, I, I, I got carried away. <laughs> um, well, I was thinking of uh, a program similar to cars, um, which uh, I, I think uh, in cars were um, doing well. Well, it, it, it was an experiment, and as it uh, turns out, uh, it, we're, we're in, in the right uh, direction. So um, if we can perhaps create uh, a similar program in, in order to um, support the development of our industries in order for us to prepare for um, Industry 4.0. Um, because like what I've said, it's so difficult to rely on the uh, GAA alone. But um, if we can uh, come up with a, with a specific uh, legislation through, through your through, through the help of the House and the Senate, uh, of course, I think uh, that would uh, really be perfect and uh, it would really um, align uh, what we um, in the government uh, are doing with respect to uh, policy make, in terms of policy making, in terms of the increased uh, coordination and collaboration that um, we are uh, pursuing. Um, uh, probably that would really create uh, a substantial impact and uh, through, through that uh, program uh, maybe we would be able to sustain uh, the manufacturing resurgence which uh, we've been experiencing although for this year we see that uh, there's there might be a there is going to be a slowdown uh, but uh, of course uh, all the more reason that uh, we, we, we need to intensify our efforts because over the last uh, four years, as manufacturing uh, was growing, if you're going to ask me whether we really have um, concrete support for the industry, I would say uh, not, nothing really much uh, except for uh, maybe the, 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 strong, um, the strong advocacy and promotion that uh, we have been doing uh, for uh, manufacturing resurgence. Um, as well as with the CARS program, of course, which is our first experiment to do um, industrial industrial policy. So maybe we can, given.
and this experience uh, in the CARS program, probably we can we can uh, do uh, something uh, bigger and create a much uh, larger um, impact. Because CARS program, it is just an executive order, and I know there are some um, um, still possible um, legal questions that could be brought up, but um, uh, the way I understood it, all um, subsidies or even taxes and incentives, they need to go through a uh, uh, legislative uh, branch of the government. Uh, <coughs> I, I have a lot of ideas, but the only thing is I always have to put my disclaimer that whatever I say does not necessarily reflect views of the IDS. Uh, I fear you're opinionated sometimes, not sometimes, maybe more often than not. Um, should we be reinventing government? Absolutely. Uh, the, the only thing is I'm not too sure about what you're suggesting that government get into business because we've not, we've not had a success <laughs> in, in, in being business-minded when, when, we're, when you're, we're having public services. Uh, yeah, and if a brohaha is already one one indication that we don't know what the market is, and yet, I, I I mean when you say China the China model again the difference in China is that the Chinese, the ones who are there are not even pure government bureaucrats and if they are they have had training they're usually engineers engineers and scientists there are a lot of people in the government bureaucracy who are actually engineers who know systems. So they approach business partly as a problem and then that needs to be fixed with a systems approach. <coughs> Unfortunately, here in the Philippines, as of um, you know, even the recent statistics now, we're having more, more scientists and engineers, a little bit perhaps, but I didn't sustain my bachelor's rates. So it's a bit, about a, a bit of a problem, but if you look at the the art, the our research scientists as a proportion to total man, to total uh, people, we have twice more lawyers than we have scientists and engineers. Uh, now, we have the right ideas to spend more for infra, but well, how do you spend more for infra if many of our engineers are overseas? Yeah. I mean, these are questions. What are the incentives, even for kids? You ask kids, just any kid, what would you like to be when you grow up? Would you ask, would they be able to say that I want to be a data scientist? I want to be, I know my, my, my nephew probably wanted to be a statistician when he was young, but now he's, he's not in statistics at all. But when he was young, because he heard that, that I'm a statistician. But other than that, you know, how, many, how many of our kids would like to be scientists and engineers? What they watch is our media. TV programs that are glorifying lawyers. I mean, I'm not that I'm always attacking lawyers. Lawyers have their place. But maybe we have too, too many of them. After all, the jurists, according to the presentation of Jake Young earlier, many of our judges, <laughs> globally at least, they will lose their jobs. <laughs> there are more tricks. Uh, uh, again, again, I'm sorry if I'm poking here and there. But but I think we need to, to, to rethink our ways of thinking, business, our paradigms have to change clearly. But whether or not we say practical, you know, learning practical skills, that ed, that our teachers, they can only teach what they know. Yes. I will already tell you, I've been out on the field. Many of the the teachers, they're the public school teachers. They're not just do, doing their jobs as teachers. They're also psychologists, guidance counselors. Everything being thrown at them. Some of the people I've talked with are teachers. They say, uh, yung mga nagda-drop out, marami mo sa kanila, kami ng family problems, na they slash their wrists. How do you do that? If I were to actually be a teacher, a public school teacher, I don't think I'll be able to handle and cope with those kinds of problems. I was not trained for that. Uh, but yet, the reality is we're you know, we're sort of expecting also certain things from our, our teachers, but are there mechanisms in place even for continuing education? If you were if you were a parent of a of from a low income and I want to reskill, what mechanisms will there be for me to get a new a new job, a new career? 
They're not in place. We don't have, I mean, of course, you can say, oh, sa TESDA, oh, sa ganito, ganyan. But it's not systematic, eh. And so if you're not going to, and you can always say, well, you know, it all starts with DBM giving, well, that's GAA, but then you can always, there can always be champions within the Congress, within the executive, to start recognizing that the, feet, that, that the landscape is changing dramatically. And if it's so, we need to really invest a lot more in our people. It's high time we do that. We have to start recognizing that investing in people is very important. But second, is also changing the landscape for the regulatory environment, procurement processes, so many things that you here can do. But why aren't we all doing it and, and working together to change things, to make things better for our people? Any more questions? Yes.
um, influence people <laughs> to um, at least provide more uh, support, uh, funding support for, for the industry. Of course, we're providing non-fiscal support in terms of uh, any legislations or any policy changes that are needed in order for them to improve their competitiveness. But as we know, a more comprehensive package is needed to uh, support the development of our industries. We need both fiscal and non-fiscal. Of course, there would be instances where in the, the, the incentives won't be the problem, but um, it, it's more of uh, other things, like it could be policies that are in place and which are uh, prohibiting uh, new entrants from coming in or preventing those uh, current players from moving up the value chain. So what we're actually doing is, um, the analysis is industry by industry. And for every industry, we analyze the supply and value chain. We also assess the, the position of our domestic industries with respect to the global value chain. And how can we move up this uh, global value chain? But again, if um, uh, we don't have the we, we don't have any existing programs, or if we won't be able to provide the necessary support to uh, help these industries grow, it would really be very difficult. And let me also say that um, if you look at the characteristics of our industries, there are a lot of uh, gaps, there are a lot of missing linkages, a lot of missing markets, which uh, uh, to me, those are already very strong justifications why government should intervene. We are not the uh, picking winners. Um, I presented to you the top 12 uh, industry priorities. I don't want to say, or I don't want to be branded as we're picking winners. The process that we're carrying out is really more of a <coughs> discovery thing. That's the reason why um, we are moving from one region to another, con doing all these consultations and dialogues with our uh, local stakeholders <coughs> because we really want to find out what the real problems are, where the comparative advantage of the different regions um, um, are, because uh, we want to we want to make sure. What well, of course we don't have a crystal ball that would tell us that uh, all these industries we're saying uh, could have a strong potential for the country would really be successful. We don't have that crystal ball, but we're trying to. Um, do as much work as possible, due diligence, if you may call it. We're, we're, we're trying to do a lot of analysis to ensure that um, this in this discovery process that we are carrying out to find out which uh, industries uh, uh, the, the country would have strong chances of success for the future. Um, it, it's really actually very helpful because uh, I think uh, it helps us uh, uh, go in the right uh, direction without, uh, of course, the, the criticism has always been that uh, you're picking winners, but um, I, I don't, I would always argue saying that I, I, the, the, the process before uh, where in government has also picked winners um, is very much different from what we are doing now. This is industrial policy. In the in the new digital age, in a more open uh, open market uh, setting, tariffs are already low, and and hence it's uh, it's uh, really very important that we um, come to understand how our industries are working versus also other industries which are being supported by their own governments. And if we won't do that, um, it's. Uh, really going to be very challenging for us to address poverty, create create uh, more and better jobs, and uh, attract more uh, uh, investors to come and uh, invest, put up their factories, make the Philippines a hub uh, for the future. Yes, ma'am. from the office of congressman again. Uh, tungkol dun sa ano, yun, the linkage between intergovernment, uh, executive and legislative, I think uh, it's better if, for example, the executive and the business sector gives um, some uh, listing of the laws which
which they think are impeding the development of the industries, or new laws that need to be created to help develop these industries. The Congress, for example, the flag law, I, uh, it's, um, I don't think it is being fully utilized to, to uh, bring that um, surge in demand uh, locally. Thus, the Congress, naman, I think it's better to create a new committee on strategic industries, not just the Committee on Trade and Commerce, to look into these strategic industries and um, develop the uh, linkage, a better linkage between the, uh, the legislative, the executive, and the business sector. Okay. 100%. Uh, other question? Yeah. Uh, I'd just like to uh, first start to commend the DTI. Uh, for the longest time, uh, we have this problem about the uh, DOF and uh, DTI loggerheads about the Russianization of fiscal incentives. And uh, now, finally, I think we have uh, made some progress on that. And uh, yes, uh, regarding the the uh, choosing of or picking of winners and losers, I think also for the longest time. Nenda has always been uh, so much very vocal about uh, uh, picking of winners and losers. But uh, I, I, I now appreciate what uh, DTI is doing. And I think this you know, really, uh, needs a new ways of doing things. Because we're talking about collaboration. And uh, how do we collaborate without a platform? And I think that's the, the roadmaps that you have got I started at the, the DTI, I am putting platforms for other than really uh, uh, choosing or picking winners and losers. Because uh, after all, it should be really a, strategy, a strategic uh, way of doing uh, things and uh, trying to really to collaborate and really have a, uh, a unified, you know, uh, we should be unified on this, given all the things that have been discussed uh, uh, and the challenges presented by this sport industry. So, so this, that's just a reaction. And, uh, I hope that we can really uh, look on, look into. Given that uh, we're already changing uh, the incentive structure, um, we, we, I don't know, maybe we also need to touch on what will happen to, um, to, 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 to the different IPAs, given that uh, the, the incentive uh, aspects, um, those provisions in their um, respective laws, um, would uh, already be repealed and would be um, integrated in the Trabajo bill. Um, the same thing goes for BOI, our omnibus investments code. Uh, um, maybe we need a separate law uh, that uh, would uh, clearly um, direct um, the proper uh, or modernize uh, the, the functions of uh, BOI along with PESA and uh, Clark Zubik how how um, that's why to me it's uh, it's important to um, as we change the the incentive structure, which actually is being made a part of the entire um, revenue international internal revenue code uh, changes. Um, but at the same time, I think there should be parallel effort uh, with respect to how do we now change um, the, the nature the the. Um, the, the organizational uh, functions of the different uh, investment priorities um, uh, agencies. So I, I think um, in the future it would also, in the very near future, because if supposed uh, Trabajo is going to be passed, uh, what, early next year, um, I think the next important step is really to uh, recreate uh, the functions and modernize um, so, so, so that uh, all our uh, existing legislations pertaining to industry development can be harmonized and aligned. And that way, um, we can um, also uh, further pursue uh, more collaboration um, and uh, the working together of the different uh, branches of government with industry and academia. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 
uh, on the sides, I was actually telling Svita earlier you know, that BPI is so lucky to have you because if not for you, I don't know. No. Well, you know she's very <laughs> modest, but I, I really give her a lot of attribution for all of these old maps, which I think are, indeed, I, I agree that they are a starting point. Uh, to at least to, to have a discussion for, uh, the only thing is, you know, uh, you know the, all those, those old maps can, have to be constantly revisited because the the landscape is changing and, and it's evolving in ways we, no no crystal ball can ever see even if we ask madam Aurin, no? uh, but the other thing that i sort of wanted to react about was regarding these regulatory reforms unfortunately law sometimes they tend to get a life of its own when it's there and then it takes decades sometimes it gets buried somewhere and there unless there's a champion in the legislature or the executive pushes for a change in the laws we're, we're not doing very well in, in that kind of regulatory reform requirements now uh, but I, I know it's it's always who, who, who actually start initiates uh, uh, <laughs> supposedly you know it's usually a, a champion but it's usually very specific to a law <laughs> but there is no no systematic examination it should i mean in theory there could be a separate independent office or the maybe the cpbrd itself but i don't know if you have enough people or a lot to actually do that because that requires a lot of technical expertise to really go through everything and and then request and then maybe even subcontract some work uh at pibs alone PIDS being the, gov part, the government think tank, we are like overstretched. I know normally we do two to three projects a year. I'm doing eight. Uh, and I don't know how long I can continue doing something like this. It's it's tough. But uh, we're trying to respond to, to all of these um, uh, needs. But again, government has to sort of recognize that part of investing in people and institutions is making sure that you know, the research, policy research, regular, even on regulatory reform needs to be done. But nobody's doing it. If you're not, if you're not gonna keep examining all the current laws, I, I remember I had a discussion once with somebody from Singapore, and she said, what, you have these thousands of laws? You know, in we have a legislature in Singapore, but they have practically no job, they just, you know, they're just because there are very few laws in Singapore. We just implement them. How, and in your case, you have thousands of laws, but how much of that is actually being implemented and given proper budgets? I could not answer, but I think I know the answer too, right? And so do every, so does everyone. So there are so many things that we need to do, but we need to sort of sit down and really think of uh, think beyond politics because you know. Uh, the it's 2030 we have the SDGs 2040 we have uh, you have uh, ambition you know, but, but the question is are we in line with all of these aspirations and I just don't know if I I, I, I really fear that we're, we're may, maybe spending our we have to make sure that whatever we spend on we're spending money <coughs> on the right things as was Jikyong was saying we're spending already a lot we thank the Congress for, for doing that, even supporting our budget at the, uh, the PIDs no? and many other <laughs> agencies. But I'm sure much more can be done. Uh, and and we're, we're, we're glad that we have these partnerships with you, but we need to really sit, sit as, as a team, as team Philippines, because right now we're, we're too bogged down with, with, every, with, with daily uh, how this is fire fighting, <laughs> you know. I mean, and, and all of this politics is just not very helpful at all. If we are really trying to think of help, of making sure that we have a better Philippines in the next even three to five years, we need to get our act together. Okay. Hey. Maybe last uh, one last question, sir. Good afternoon to everyone. I'm Arnold Garbanzos from the Office of Congressman Frederick Shaw of Iligan, known district. My city used to be known as the Industrial City of the South. 
Almost all the big industries are located in my city. As a matter of fact, the biggest steel plant in the country is still located in my city. I was taken by surprise by the statement of uh, Dr. Al Aldaba that, you know, we're going into cars program. We have some good incentives for shipbuilding. But where's, where's our steel? I mean, we have, we have all this, you know, uh, alamuti, but there's no backbone. So maybe, I mean, ito naman po is, I'm just trying to suggest, ganito lang po. My company fight for steel. We might even fight for your budget. And we already have the necessary connections to do this. But still, we need to know from DPI, what is your strategy or what is your program for steel? Because in the last administration, the basic stand was, ayaw namin makialam dyan sa iligan. Okay? Now, I will try to emphasize something very simple. When iligan is practically, and that mill there in iligan, ma'am, doctora, can still run. Old technology, but can still manufacture. So, ang amin lang naman po is, Maybe later I'll get your card, but ikaw kayo sir. Kasi other than that fact, Iliga is the battery of Mindanao. We practically supply 60% of the electricity of Mindanao. We are supposed to be the brightest, but today we are the darkest. Maybe that is something that also Dr. Arthur can look into. Do a little study on Iligan and Danao. Supposed to be that, but ikaw pinakamaliwan, hindi ba't ka naging madilim? So, there must be something wrong. There must be a detach somewhere between policies and what we are supposed to do in our area. Of course, I will not discount that politics comes into it. But now that we are together, at least nag-ibig po tayo lahat, maybe we can do something of course, going back to steel. Maraming salamat po. Ang steel po is part of the top 12 industry priorities that we have. We are promoting automotive, shipbuilding, consumer appliances. But like what I stated earlier, meron po marami yung ano, yung mga steel bars, the long products. Uh, we're able to manufacture those uh, locally. But for the flats, we don't have. Kasi nga, nawala yung National Steel uh, Corporation, which uh, in, in the past, no, na for us to have uh, this uh, uh, integrated steel manufacturing. But uh, it, it, NSC has a very long history, and um, to, cut, to cut it short, uh, meron po siyang malaking uh, problema ngayon kasi, di ba, umalis yung global, na pinarivatize natin, pinen, uh, pinigay natin kay global, only to uh, turn out na parang si global pala, wala namang enough uh, capital to uh, really operate yung ating, um, yung ating uh, steel production. So, uh, ngayon, malaki yung pagkakautang. Um, so, I don't, uh, and, and yung facility, nandun pa rin naman, but uh, we're not, uh, we're, we're, we're not uh, really sure kung merong interested um, investors because Right now, while we're not uh, getting any, uh, maybe there's some, pero hindi po natutuloy kasi nga dahil dun sa mga uh, financial problems uh, na, um, uh, uh, na embedded yung uh, NSC. But there are uh, investors from Japan, from Taiwan, from China na gusto magtayo ng uh, integrated steel manufacturing dito sa bansa. Um, so hindi ko po, hindi ko lang po sure kung ang pinitingnan po natin is for us to revive the NSC and for government to um, invest. Uh, ganun, ganun po ba yung, ano, yung direction? Yan, doctor, let me give you a little background lang. Actually, yung pagpasok po ng global sa national steel, that is backed up by the Indian government. The 13.5 billion which the Indian promised to pay the liquidator, yung mga banko, is actually airlock for the eight years. Airlock yan, meaning there is no, there is no, uh, let's say, falter in the payment. 
for the next eight years. Actually, nakabayad na yung mga Indiano ng 2.5 billion. And they were ready to pay another billion for the fourth year. No? Ang nangyari lang po, nagkaroon ng problema on the ground sa local government. Ganun ang nangyari. But as far as the Indians are concerned, as far as Mr. Metal is concerned, there is no problem with the money within why It's backed up by the Indian government. Maybe that is something that DTI should look deeply into. Kasi part po yata sa BOI po na function niya yung mga ano no. So, uh, eh, mamaya na lang ma'am, uh, we'll exchange cards. We'll exchange cards. I mean, I feel so bad. You know, that's the problem with our government. Maraming gusto mag-invest. Pagdating na investor, we give so much incentive. Pag nakapasok na sila, inaaway natin yung investor. That's what we're doing. We're trying to let lure them in, pasok sila, they invest, they bring all their families here, bring their technology, and in the middle of the ball game, they know all the answers, we change all the questions. Ganun po nangyari doon. Sige lang po, later po. Thank you, thank you. Okay. Uh, we support, ha? we support uh, steel, yung mga basic industries natin like steel and chemicals na kulang pa rin. Uh, we support, we are supporting all those, especially in the second phase of uh, implementation of manufacturing insurgence program. So, we uh, support that because we are thinking about the entire, yung entire uh, industry. Natin. And uh, it's really uh, very important for us that the basics are here, including those mga strategic parts and components that we should be able to do Otherwise, Mabilis lang aalis yung investor, di, puro assembly process and test, and eh, any any disruption, madali. Like for example, after nga in-announce yung, ano, yung um, well, given all the discussions natin on the trabaho, naging uh, ang perception nila naging uh, uncertain, and so we're we're um, receiving nga din mga reports about this and that company na aalis daw. But, um, kinakausap natin sila. But of course, yung, kaya yung, yung focus natin is the creation of uh, an industry cluster para um, kasi pag cluster sila, andito yung mga vital support industries, mahihirapan sila umalis. So, yun po talaga yung ambition natin. Kaya yung, yung still napaka-halaga. Another thing, Dr. Before I forget, I'd like to emphasize to the body, we can produce the cheapest steel in Asia through national steel. Why? It is backed up by hydropower. Seven hydro complexes supporting a steel industry. Water is for free, all the way from the plano. Per kilowatt hour. Maybe two pesos per kilowatt hour. We can produce that kind of steel. Then lang po ang synergy ng dalawa. Maraming salamat po. Thank you for that uh, information, sir. Uh, one very last question for uh, <laughs> a privilege to come <laughs> out also. Um, um, uh, for Dr. Alaba and Dr. Albert, uh, so uh, basically we need a, a framework to address the SLT and innovation problem or situation in the country. So much of this would, uh, I hope, focus on the incentives that we will give, the non-fiscal and also just a few fiscal incentives. So one is also on, one incentive should be on patenting, so to encourage innovation. And in one forum, I, um, the DOSD um, presented that they have to streamline even the process of, of patenting. So maybe that could also act, serve as an incentive for innovators. Second is, uh, in one of, of Dr. Albert's um, publication on innovation, also on businesses and firms, you've stated that um, one incentive to encourage also innovation among our <coughs> domestic scientists is for government to procure uh, the LG especially as a, a client also of innovators. So um, would this also involve mandating the uh, the DPWH and for the DOST to 
uh, to impose uh, standards with the DPWA so that LGUs would um, adopt uh, tested technology and also technology from our domestic in, uh, scientists. And this would, in the, in the field of um, intelligent transport, like intelligent transport systems, and also in the, in the man, uh, solid waste management, that is a huge problem of LGUs. But up to now, frustrated talaga ako pag nakakita ako ng mga plastic hanggang ngayon sa basura. Hindi ma-address ng LGUs. So, kailangan bang i-mandate na talagang high-tech na yung, yung technology na uh, i-adapt ng LGUs. So, yun lang. So, ay, ay, yun din. Kasi na-frustrate na din ako na Recently, yung ombudsman uh, kinlear, uh, nirevoke na niya yung mga cases on LGUs na nag-operate ng open pit uh, landfill na, ano, na inalis na lahat yung mga cases ng mga mayors. So, ano, uh, para ba, paano ma-incentivize o mamamandate talaga yung mga LGUs na mag-adapt ng bagong technology? Uh, we really need the support of actually yung LGUs very important po yan if uh, you may recall in one of the slides talagang dun sa creation ng mga regional inclusive innovation hubs uh, pag hindi po sinoportahan ng mga local government units mahihirapan syempre uh, kailangan ng pagkuha ng mga permits kailangan din ng yung, yung, yung interaction with the LGUs ng mga innovators at saka yung mga um, mga uh, facilities na nandun sa ano dun sa uh, innovation center mahirap po without uh, the support of uh, the LGUs that's why the next step namin is uh, really to in involve uh, the ILG also and um, dun sa mga regions na binibisita po namin we also try to uh, arrange courtesy visits dun sa mga mga mayors and uh, mga governors just so we will, we can explain kung ano tong kung ano tong mga uh, ginagawa natin but um, unfortunately um, um, in most cases uh, para konti lang yung namit namin hindi namin sila namit talaga lahat and then yung yung point po sa ano dun sa um, uh, pag-register ng mga patents i think uh, um, na raised din ho yan in uh, a lot of uh, the seminars and mga consultations that we had kasi mabagal at saka matagal yung process ni IPO, uh, actually IPO Phil yun. And we're also uh, talking to IPO Phil. But uh, beyond that, um, yung strategy po natin is really, kasi hindi, po ma hindi naman po ma-ensure din na kahit may patent na maka-commercialize or magkakaroon ng licensing or makonvert talaga, mag mag magkaroon ng produkto. Yung gusto po talaga natin is yung commercialization ng lahat ng mga R&D investments. And syempre kasama dun sa uh, process yung uh, pagkuha ng ano, pagkuha ng mga patents or, or licenses and then um, ma ma convert na nga siya kung may patent na or may, may, mayroong license, pwede nang uh, siguro magkaroon ng mga spin-offs or uh, yung mga or uh, mag-issue ng mga licenses. So, pwedeng i-produce ng induced ng third party yung uh, yung product. Siguro ako lang sasabihin ko that was in a way uh, uh, a little bit more to the idea of reinventing government. Kasi nga, you have various government institutions, national, local governments, but we're not all speaking the same voice. Yeah. You have a cacophony of voices. Isa sabi, hindi, ito gawin, hindi gawin. Tapos at the end of the day, hindi mo nang alam ko ano, sino pa susundin dito, no? I mean, the, and, and, and there were points earlier about, you know, reeling in investors, whether national or foreign, but yet, we, the environment isn't conducive to actually, because I think, Many of the the government processes are not are, are really putting stumbling blocks to for us to become to do things properly. Uh, there are supposedly going back to your point about plastic. Supposedly, now there are new technologies also that eat plastic. 
But how much of that is getting adopted? Uh, maybe it's too expensive right now, but in the future, it, things may, may change. But in the meantime, maybe, uh, while I can understand your point that there's a, there might be needs for new regulations to against LGUs to do certain things, certain mandates, but I don't know if you're also, makikinig ba sila? Kapag nagbinigyan mo silang mandate na gano'n? I mean, kasi, baka we, uh, we might be overdoing things also because maybe the, the approach might be a bit, bit more different. If you're going to change people's behavior and incentivize them, maybe the, the way to go about it is also to talk with them, because for some of them, um, they may just not have the, they may not understand the importance of doing that, but if you talk with them, then maybe they take on a different approach, because at the end of the day, people's interests can change. So we just they need to <coughs> find those avenues so that people can change. Okay, I'm afraid they're, uh, ah. Very, very sure. There is uh, an iron and steel industry act, which I think needs to be reviewed so that it would be more attuned to the times. Okay, thank you, ma'am. One last question. Okay. Um, we're trying to create yung ano nga, uh, part of uh, eh, implement yung creation ng uh, Iron and Steel Council. So um, maybe through this council talaga magkakaroon ng close uh, dialogues and mga conversations so that uh, we will be able to identify yung correct direction um, at, uh, as to what we need to do in the uh, marami problema dun sa ating ano, steel industry. So, um, ongoing naman po yung mga, meron din ano, roadmap ang iron and steel and uh, meron kami iron and steel champions sa DPI. So, tuloy-tuloy po namin uh, ginagawa uh, ang lahat ng kaya namin gawin uh, para uh, ma-revive yung ating uh, iron and steel sector. Okay, I'm afraid we have uh, run out of time and uh, again let us give a uh, warm applause to our reactors and our resource persons. Thank you. And to close our program, uh, may I invite uh, Dr. Romulo Emanuel Merard, our Director General, sir. We would just like to thank uh, our resource person and the institutions that they represent. Uh, it's really been a very interesting uh, afternoon. And I think the key word that uh, from all the discussions uh, and uh, presentations is really collaboration. So I think with that, uh, we should start really start collaborating. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, thank you and good afternoon, sir.